Welcome to the crap and the crazy with Tash Critter. Tash owns Little Wooden Toy Box and is mother of two teens, both with autism, ADHD and PDA. 10 years in early intervention, working with the kids' OTs, speeches and psychologists has given Tash unique insight into understanding difficult behaviours and why they occur, as well as understanding how emotional regulation and sensory input impacts us and our behaviour. This insight has helped Tash design and implement resources and coping strategies to make home life calmer and more organised. Join Tash as she talks about day-to-day -day life with autism, the sucky bits and the wins, plus tips for enjoying life despite the challenges. Hello, welcome to episode 10. This is where I'm going to talk about clothing and sensory issues and meltdowns and the reasons why our kids with autism um, don't cope with clothes, yeah? Or particular types of clothes or tags or seams or the textures of the fabric or tightness or whatever else. There are a ton of different issues and this was a big trial and error one um, from when my kids were little, but even now, yeah? And then once you realize these issues, so these sensory issues, which again, no one tells you about, your kid doesn't come with a manual, and then you realize all of your sensory issues as well, and then, yeah, then you've got three people living in the house all with different sensory issues, different clothing issues, whatever else. Um, so my girl used to throw up in the car and it took me forever to realize by forever, probably about three, four years old, um, the elastic across her belly in the car seat, especially the kids' car seats, like they kind of crunch you in half a bit, yeah? And then the straps on top of that and combine that with the elastic around the waist, um, that was just too much for her. So she would throw up. Now, whether that was just the clothing or cart sickness on top of that, or that as well as anxiety, I'm not entirely sure. There's kind of no way of knowing. But when I started buying clothing, so the leggings a size up, that reduced it, yeah? Um, we can't get any clothing between all three of us, actually, not that you would get boys' clothing with this, but with the elastic in the sleeves, yeah? Um, I hate sleeves, so I will either wear jumpers with, you know, no shirt underneath. Um, my girl will wear jumpers or T-shirts and I cannot wear t-shirts. I cannot have something halfway on my arm that just, up. well, I can, but it upsets me. Like I'm not, I'm not comfortable. In our, in our house, sorry, we call that not fitting in our skin. And whether that's because of clothing or we're not um, regulated, you know, we, you know, just that creepy skin feeling, yes? Which your clothing can do for you. You can do when, uh, you can feel that when you're sensory overwhelmed, when you're emotionally overwhelmed, um, as well as whatever other reason. But we call that not fitting in our skin. And clothing is a good reason for all of us in our house to feel that way. Um, tags are a big one. So a lot of our clothing has the tags cut off or we get the clothing with the tags actually printed onto the shirt, yeah, which is more common now. Seams are another one. There's some clothing that I can't wear um, where whatever fabric they've used to sew it together prickles, yeah? It feels like it's on fire against my skin. And yeah, no, can't do that. Um, my girl will either, I've talked about this before, I think I have, um, or it may have been in the routines training but for her, um, because of the whole sensory issues, how long it takes to get used to change, and this is something I noticed back when she was two, and it really hasn't changed 10, 12 years on. Um, so she would get used to whatever clothing you were supposed to wear in the season, but it would take her about three months to get used to it. So she's often, and you know, the, the seasons change every three months, at least here in WA they do. Um, so... Yeah, in winter, she has finally got used to wearing shorts and shirt for summer, so that's what she wears in winter, yeah? And then in winter, she loves her, so it takes her a while to get used to it, she loves her tracky dacks and jumper, so in summer, that's what we're wearing because it's taken her that long to get used to it. So I've just been shopping with her uh, for her Christmas present, so money she had for a Christmas present, and it's summer, yeah? It's hot. And she's bought tracky dacks and cargo pants 
and only one jumper this time so we're doing good yeah but she's bought that in summer because that's what she's comfortable in we have managed to get t-shirts so we've got oh yeah shirts to go with the pants but yeah yeah so if you're wondering why your kid seems to be doing the opposite that could very well be why it could be that they have taken three months to get used to the feeling of different clothes so i mean in summer when you've just got you know short shirt on often baggy your little shorts whatever else she's gotten used to that and in winter the feel of winter clothes so jumpers tracky pants so full length clothing on your body is very different for kids with autism and sensory processing issues this is a big deal yeah not for all of them um i i could say i don't have issues with that it's summer and i'm wearing a jumper and i've put the air conditioner up so i can have my jumper on so yeah maybe i've got some issues too there um but yeah just because your kid has sensory processing disorder or it's autism it doesn't mean they're going to have all of these issues yeah and we'll see different issues in our house between the three of us and some are similar some are completely different another one or rather what we do to cope with these things um more so when they were younger because i didn't understand why they were the way they were um oh i remember socks socks and shoes were an absolute nightmare especially when they're growing so fast and it took us i don't know 45 minutes I don't think I could cope any longer than that trying to find a pair of shoes because you had to try on every single pair of shoes in the store and then pick the best of all the horrible shoes because they just didn't like the feeling of it on their feet and I guess it's the seams and whatnot inside the shoes um, but on that note and that used to be a meltdown every single morning getting your shoes on to go to school Ugh, fun times we have grown past that we're good now but put the socks inside out because that seam at the end of the socks touching their toes with shoes on top um, is upsetting yeah so when we turned the, uh, the socks inside out that was just a little thing that we could do because look your kid has to go to school with shoes on yeah so that's again pick your battles and that one unfortunately is one that you have to get past um, we tried compression clothing for my boy don't think that would have worked for my girl and didn't try it for her because she would tend to throw up if things were too tight but for him um, the compression clothing which is basically stretchy so thick stretchy singlety sort of fabric i don't know the name of the fabric um but in you know it was long but it was probably two to three sizes too small like narrow so when he had it on it was like a hug yeah so that proprioception same as that deep pressure but he could go to school with that where obviously he's not going to get the deep pressure not like i could do it at home but he'd have it in his clothing so he would wear that under his school shirt and that worked for him so that's another thing available that look, you may not have even heard of but we found that from our ot what i did do for my girl um so again the proprioception but I remember with my boy we used to have a snake toy we've probably still got it so it's a snake but it's weighted so it probably be two kilos maybe so we could go to the shops and he could wind it around his neck or put it over his shoulders we also had a small probably 40 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters little lap mat that was five kilos so in the car he would always have that on his lap these things didn't work for my girl whether she just didn't like them um i'm not sure but what did work for her she had a little backpack so she would have been two three at this age um there was not online shopping at this point either do online shopping avoid the shops anyway so she would have this little butterfly backpack and i put um i don't know why we had them must have come in some sort of sensory pack little bean bags filled with sand so five of them in the backpack probably would have only been five six hundred grams but for a two three year old is heavy enough but that was weight that she could have on her body but in a more socially acceptable way that she loved yeah so i guess my point there is finding things that your kids like and love and respond to um rather than you know making them look weirder on top of their weird behavior in public does that make sense i probably didn't word that the best way but you get my point yes for all my girls weird sensory issues she would wear those princess dresses and they're the fabric's horrible the stitching's horrible um on the because i used to work at markets with 
little wooden toy box back in the day and some of the stalls had these beautiful princess dresses so maybe they weren't the cheap and nasty ones but she loved them so the the love of the clothing obviously overrid the sensory issues i suppose or we may have put singlets on um underneath uh, that's what i did we had clothing on underneath the dresses so that those seams around the belly especially and you know that smocking shirring whatever it is on the the chest part so none of that touched her skin she would have a singlet on underneath again good strategy to try for any of those printed shirts as well where they've got the embroidery on the front and then that scratchy meshing fabric behind if you've got a singlet top on underneath that doesn't actually touch your skin um one that i still do now that i do with my girl or you know where you've got tags where you cut it off but it's still got the end bits that prickle you can put that elastic sports tape over the top and it lasts through the wash it doesn't come off so i do that on any bra seams or side seams or whatever else where i either need to tape the tag down or tape down the remainders of the tag or if there's horrible stitching you can use that elastic uh, sports tape to tape over it and it it's fine survives the wash love that one i only discovered that recently so yeah i still do that with my clothing i have issues yeah i'm pretty sure you figured that something else for when you're out and about so coping strategies like the weighted backpack and the weighted toys and the weighted um you know mat things lap mat lap whatever you call them weighted blankets small ones for the car um, you can use sunnies for when you're out and about so whether that's either in the car my boy hates the sun still now it's enough to really upset him and make him feel sick um, that's just the bright lights and his processing of that sensory input I suppose um, so having the sunnies having noise cancelling headphones to block out the sound so these are really useful if you're at the shops and you need to take your little one with you just to you know dull down the senses I suppose they also have um, sensory shopping types I don't know what they're called low sensory shopping times and they're often at that often can't get to them when you've got kids but they're at that 11 30 kind of time period where it's quieter in the shops again these didn't exist um, when mine were little and yeah well they're in school now at those times so I haven't actually tried them but just in case it helps you and you didn't know about it um, something which is really obvious but I never thought to do having a spew bag in the car if you do have a kid that responds physically to sensory overwhelm having spew bag and wipes and cause I've talked about this in other podcasts and how annoying it was well obviously it's, it's annoying and gross but I never actually had a spew kit you think I would have figured that out by now uh, now I do yeah now that she's 13 I'm pretty sure that will do for now as far as some tools and strategies another one when you find something that works buy lots of them as far as clothing goes whether that's in different colors so I will do that more with my boy as they get older that doesn't work so well but actually no I did it with both of them so finding a brand that works you just get all the different colors yeah yeah anyway um, I'm going to leave it at that on the whole clothing and sensory front I will talk to you soon bye